Okay, um, the, this would be closer to what the title is. So what I'm going to describe is old uh, and current work, the current parties with these gentlemen, uh, and relatively recent work, that I think will uh, put um, up some of the things, this talk belongs to yesterday or the day before, it's not about our FOT, but put some uh, questions about replicas with a more uh, thermodynamic flesh, uh, as you will see. So what we're going to consider is that we have a system and we are going to apply it a multi-bath, couple it to a multi-bath. So what is a multi-bath? This is a bath term. This is another bath term. So there is a, a, a friction term and there is a noise term which is correlated and the relation between the correlation and the friction defines the temperature of the bath. So one bath has a time scale that is fast and another one a time scale that is very much slower. In principle, uh, so much smaller than, lower than this one, this system in contact with this bus does everything it has to do before moving on with this one and uh, the scales are completely one inside the other. So this is going to be the game uh, throughout and I'm going to use the prefix multi all the time which means, so in this case it's two but we can do it with more. So this is th these things we were playing with 20 years ago with Leticia. We wrote some papers on it, and, uh, and, and this is the approach. But at the time, there were things we didn't know that we now know, and that uh, uh, we are working with together with uh, Pierluigi, Emanuele, and uh, Federico. So um, if the conditions are given, you multi-thermalize. So, with a single bath, if the conditions are given, you thermalize, meaning that if it's a Langevinian bath, you get to the Gibbs measure. If the conditions are given here so that the times are so large and so separate and so on, but note that the two temperatures are different of the two baths, you go not to the Gibbs measure, but to this thing. So you have two types of variables. The first ones are in contact with a fast bath, then they do everything they have to do with a fast bath with temperature T2. From here you get a free energy which acts as a potential to the slower bath. Note that X1 is here just a parameter that is moving very slowly. And if you can assume all these things, the system tends to this form. So two comments about this. First of all, there are not many out of equilibrium measures around in the market. Actually, there are none as far as I know. This one is one. It's an out of equilibrium situation which is very peculiar, but it gives you a formula that is a generalization of the Gibbs formula. Good. Second and interesting, N, you can quickly, you can easily see, is T2 over T1, which is arbitrary. But you can look at this in another way. Mark mentioned it two days ago. N could be a replica, and you could be doing, if X1 were the uh, disorder and X2 the dynamic variables, so these are the spins and these are the Js, then you are calculating a replica trick thing with a practical, in a practical way that you can put in the computer. So choosing T2 over T1 allows you to work with what Mark called clones, and you can put any number you want from zero to infinity. So it is first message here. This is a first way to see how the replica trick, let's say without replicas, can be implemented in a computer. Okay? That's the first thing, and uh, this has not been uh, implemented as far as I know. You can do it with more. So uh, you can uh, calculate the partition function with one variable, integrate it away in, with a Gibbs measure, obtain a new free energy with a new temperature, and then integrate over a second variable and so on. And you are going to get Gibbs within Gibbs within Gibbs to any number. But it, it, so you can multi, not bi-thermalize, but multi-thermalize. Please stop me along if you... I, I'm, I'm glad to answer on the way. Okay. Yes? Assuming for the moment, and one more transparency, full uh, uh, separation. Yes, for the moment. 
So, interestingly, the measure associate this one with uh, Gibbs inside Gibbs inside Gibbs with different temperatures, as far as I know, was introduced explicitly in this uh, uh, by Miguel and, and Giorgio in a paper that I think deserves to be a bit better known. Uh, and, but they were not talking about multi-thermalization, maybe, maybe they had it in mind, but not about a specific bath that would do the job, but it is a measure, and their question was, how can I do a parameter conjugate to a block of Parisi? And uh, this is the way you do it. What's the connection to Zoplinsky? It, it, I think I can, it will come in a, in a second. Uh, uh, yeah, it will come, but I, I'll, I'll mention it when I arrive to a relevant place. Uh, so, very quickly, how would you do this in practice? This is what we did with Emanuele uh, Mingione uh, and Pierluigi Contucci. Our variables are the spins and the j's. We evolve the spins, as you know, I mean, with anything, fast. And then the j's evolve with this uh, equation with another temperature. Note that uh, the, this k imposes a time scale. And uh, the proof that you're getting this measure, you write the equ explicit equation for the j's. Uh, this says that given the, sig given the j's, because they are very slow, the sigmas have the Gibbs measure. But because of the slowness, you can replace uh, this by its average. And so you can write it this way. And it's three lines you get to the multi-thermalization formula. What I did in these last two transparencies, take my word for it, is uh, show that two very separate baths indeed give you the multi-thermalization formula that Miguel and, and Giorgio had done many, many, many years ago. Okay? And they also give you whatever replica scheme you want to do. You can do it in practice. Your only big problem is the time scale separation. Okay? Now, uh, about this formula that, you know, this one, with an N, this has a, a history, a parallel history. First of all, Imri Kondor did the temperature replica number plane for real replicas, uh, phase diagram for Sherrington Kirkpatrick, and uh, a little time later, uh, Garner and Derrida did it uh, exactly for the, for, the, for the REM. And you have, uh, this is temperature, this is the glass phase, this is the paramagnetic phase, the, 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 the phase diagrams are very similar, and this is um, a phase we will talk about later. It's not a glass. Okay, so now one would be able to numerically access this entire plane for the reasons I told you with a multibath, okay? But that's, so that's one of the messages of here. And the fact that we are working with a real number of replicas, but we never introduced replicas here, notice. Okay, except for, the, for writing the measure. Okay, so another which you know very well and uh, related to what Jean-Philippe mentioned, an older work by Kirkpatrick and Volines, maybe Dave, too, uh, is Monasson's work, which is a big classic, you all know it. It was done here uh, when we were all here. Uh, he just takes the, a glass or a liquid applies a small random field, and he re-thermalizes this field to a higher temperature. Well, you can do exactly the same here, but now instead of applying a field, you apply a slow bath with another temperature, and it is exactly the same calculation I have mentioned here, and you can do it in practice with this method. So, it is possible to experimentally, or at least numerically, play Monasson's game, and for those of you, and this isn't my only RFOT moment of this morning, you could apply an extremely stringent test to uh, RFOT, because you, by changing the uh, temperature, the slow temperature of a um, supercool liquid, you would be able to move along the Monasson 
variable, and uh, RFOT has everything to tell you about what that should be like. You should be able to cross the glass transition with an epsilon of perturbation, for example, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So for those of you who are uh, lovers of RFOT, this is doable, and uh, it's, it's implementing this idea. OK, so now the problem that uh, was mentioned here. Uh, what happens, what, it seems like a nuisance, the fact that you have to take time scales that are widely separate. It seems that you have to thermalize the fast before you can move the slow. However, we can use an, ex an, an argument that was already mentioned yesterday by uh, Silvio, Mark, uh, Giorgio, and Luca, uh, that uh, actually macroscopic in finite dimensions, macroscopic uh, variables, um, extensive variables, converge to their target value even out of equilibrium. So even without equilibrating, the energy density, the magnetization density, and so on, have to have as an asymptote the right value. This, with some exceptions that we can discuss, but this is a very, very, uh, well, this has been the justification to do replicas to infer dynamical data. So it means that for finite dimensional systems, you can do a simulation without actually needing that the slow time scale be divergently slower than the fast one. It has to be much slower, but there is no exponential of n between them by using this argument. So that is good news, but note that it doesn't work for something like the p-spin mean field. Okay, so this is just to say that these simulations really can be doable. And now we are in the TN, and I have to try to guess what the droplet scenario would say about the TN. So the T replica number, but actually it's a quotient of two temperatures, remember you don't need replicas for this, uh, has three phases, a replica symmetry breaking one, a paramagnet one, and a Mattis one, uh, you will see why I call it Mattis. And I have to try to guess what a droplet model would say about that. Now, doing a replica calculation to a droplet model seems uh, oxymoronic, at least, or something like that. But to try something, one thing uh, one can try is to do it for a model that has two states and see what it gives. And what it gives for this model, and I am making a leap of uh, faith, and, and you will see why, but it would seem, and I'm not sure at all, that this transition is absent. So that you only have the Mattis, and I will explain why, the Mattis uh, and the paramagnet. And the actual transition in replica number is flat on to n equals zero. So this reminds a lot of the Almeida Taulet line that is going away. And you will see in a second uh, why I think that this might be true. So why is this? Well, the reason why this is, is that your ferromagnet now is annealed when n is not zero. So what does anneal mean? Anneal means that the j's are doing something to optimize, to get things better. You are changing the disorder. So how does a jij uh, change when you allow it to change? Well, we know this. It has a semicircle distribution of eigenvalues normally, and the cheapest thing that the J's can do is unstick an eigenvalue. This is very, very common and very well known. Unstick one. But unsticking an eigenvalue means that the new matrix behaves like a normal semicircle plus a projector onto this one. But when you look at this, you see that your spin glass now has become a mattice because this is a projector onto something. It's like a ferromagnetic term, but along a random direction. So, in two words, when you allow a spin glass to do whatever it wants with its J's, the way it does to optimize is matticifying itself. Okay? Very well. And we can think that this is very generic. Like to 
Uh, there is no longer any, if this is, at least in the model I did, if this happens, there is no longer any temperature chaos in, in all this region. Well, no, I mean, the temperature chaos is very generic. Well, but, but this is not even a glass now. It's, it's, uh, now, wait, the, the vectors that this matis, the directions of the matis variables can be anything. That's, that's true. Because any, any eigenvector that unsticks will, will do the job. Yes. Yeah, the, the vector of Matisse will, will, in the slow scale, will, will slowly precede. Well, precise. well, in finite dimensions, this has to be checked. So, uh, 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 my argument here is very well established, and I can prove it for fully connected a spherical model, and this is the truth. Now, does this happen for the spectrum? On the, on the lattice, of the lattice, I don't know. It seems like possible, but it has to be checked. That, that's for sure. So you have to think that this scenario, if I am saying that this is the, what the droplet would give you, I'm guessing, and it could well be different. I think, what I think, and uh, let me do one more transparency, is that if you believe in my previous argument, this has not been done for the moment, it looks as if uh, because it's a ferromagnet, this was studied many years ago by uh, Florent and, uh, and Olivier. Of course, uh, Olivier Martin, of course, their answer to the question is what was more than premature, but they, they say that they didn't find a transition when there is a magnetization term, I have, in finite dimensions. In Schoenberg and Patrick, this is possible. I, I have no prejudice as to this, but it would be interesting at any rate if there is a line to play the game that Nick Reed was playing uh, two days ago. Maybe with this line, instead of the Almeida, playing the role of the Almeida Taules line, it could be doable, and maybe with an effective theory, one can, one can learn, really. My level of ignorance on this line is, is, is even larger than the level of ignorance we have as to the Almeida Taules line, so this is, this is how it is. Okay. This is open, this is all to be done. Uh, I'm guessing that my guess can be wrong, and at least, uh, but, okay. So, there is an analogy with magnetization. Now, for the last thing, and I think the most interesting, is now look at, this is the very famous, and we had a nice talk about this, Guerra interpolation scheme. So, what Francesco did, is to couple the system to or interpolate between a system of several ferromag uh, ferromagnetic, no, sorry, uh, magnetic field couplings. The J's for him are uh, the ferromagnetic things. And to, in my language, it is exactly coupling it to a multi thermalized system. So the J's. You can do Guerra's interpolation scheme, at least in a Gedanken simulation. You can do it with time scales one inside of the other. And in that limit, at least as a matter of principles, this is what Guerra's scheme is. So you move, this is his idea, you move and you do multi thermodynamic integration, meaning that you change the parameters. You can change it in many ways. In his case, he changes this T, which simultaneously changes the force of the original Hamiltonian and the force of these auxiliary baths, which are nested one inside of the other. And you can do Guerra's thing, and you can picture it without any replicas. Of course, well, it, did, it didn't have any replicas in, in, in his uh, in his construction, but you can imagine doing this in reality. And what is, he, what, is, what is he doing? So let's go back one step. What is a, a, a now, now I'm going to give you some Polinsky in a second. Um, what is um, thermodynamic integration in general? You go slowly, you measure the energy at each step, and you integrate dE over T, you know this, and it has to be such that it's so slow that if you did it twice as slower, twice as 
in twice as much as time, you would get the same result. This is what I understand by reversible. Reversible for me is a transformation which, done at half the speed, gives you the same result. So, uh, this is what you do when you do thermodynamic integration, and you can check that at each step, if the thing is truly reversible, there has to be no, when you stop, there has to be no exchange, heat exchange. This is what reversibility is for you. And uh, for the purpose of integration, you may assume that the values are those of equilibrium. Because if they are not, you duplicate the time and, that, and so on until it doesn't change anymore by, by construction. So what is, what, is, what is the meaning of multi-thermalizing? Multi-thermalizing, you're doing exactly the same, but now you have the nested baths. You have to assume that at each step you are multi-thermalized, which takes some time, and then you duplicate the times of every, every single time in your game, and you could do a path of multi-thermodynamics for which you have a static measure. But that is what Guerra is doing. And now you can do it experimentally in a simulation. Now the question is, is there some heat exchange at each, if I stop at each time? Well, this is going to be important. And just check that for the purposes of integration, you may assume that all values are in the multi-thermalized uh, thing. So add the prefix multi and you're, you're done. Uh, to every word, add the word, the prefix multi and, and this is what so, this is for experts. Uh, if C and R are the correlation and response of the system and the effective temperature, because we are out of equilibrium, def so defined, this is the definition of it, and C and R, C, I'm using Guerra's notation, more or less. C0 and R0 are those of the bath, which defines the axis. Guerra's error, I, I like the, the expression, the, the famous term that is squared and hence is positive, in dynamics becomes this object, but it's dynamical. In your, if you are doing it in a simulation with a multi bath this is what you have to measure to get Guerra's term. And when you look at it, it is exactly a form of heat transport term, because this is the response of the system one times the correlation of the two meaning the noise, and the response of two times the correlation of one, and such is the form of heat transport terms. Here you have an effective temperature difference. The difference between the temperature of the multibath, each temperature, because there are many here, that they depend on times, and the temperatures. And here is, if you want, where some Polinsky enters, because uh, this x over here and the, the, the successive x is with nested times were the original idea of, of Heim. So, uh, okay, so what is this? This is telling you simply that you are looking, so if, although we did not prove yet anything about this, but Guerra's error term, the fact that it is positive is a multi Second principle term. You are saying that work divided by temperature but integrated over all the blocks is positive, which is, has completely the flavor that for a single bath, if we were with a single normal bath, this would be the second principle. Changes in current divided by temperature have to give you positive. You are producing entropy by, by coupling to a bath. Well, this has the form and, and I wouldn't be surprised if Francesco says that this is what he had in mind, but uh, he has to, where is he? Uh, you. But this is what it is. So now, uh, careful, I don't, need, I don't know how to do anything rigorous with this, but I do have an intuition on this, because this looks very much like a generalization of the second principle, which by the way, I haven't proven, but I think it may be proven probably under some conditions. Okay, so this is about it. Uh, you can play the game with the NT phase diagram. I don't know what it will give. Of one thing I am sure, even if we knew where, what the two scenarios should give us, I'm sure that this will not resolve the issue because you don't get things for nothing and these simulations have been around for centuries, but it gives you the possibility of doing simulations that were never done before and playing with things that nobody played with before. Uh, 
you could play, and this I think would be interesting, it would, with the Monasson construction, uh, it would be something of a generalization of the peeling fields of Chiara and Giulio, but they are mobile and they are thermalized, not to infinite temperature, but to some finite temperature. So it gives you an extra idea, you can, and it becomes the Monasson integration, if you want. And I should give credit to the previous paper that Jean-Philippe mentioned before. And I think a nice thing is to think of Guerra's interpolation scheme as multi bath thermodynamics, multi reversible transformations, and multi uh, second principle considerations. So, thank you very much. Thanks very much, Jorge. Do we have any questions? Yes, uh, the, I don't know if they make the remark, but if they don't, if they didn't, uh, I, add, I would add that if the synapse uh, field is coupled to a slow thermal, decent thermal bath with a different temperature, then you get exactly what I mean. And then you get the multi-measure that Giorgio and Miguel studied uh, 30 years ago. Not in the brain, of course, but I mean, in our dreams, yes, uh, maybe. In, uh, in the interpolation formula, there is this parameter t from 0 to 1. One can, can look at it uh, just as a mathematical uh, expression, and uh, it will give the, the bound uh, and so on. But, uh, of course, it appears in a physical formula, so to speak, with the, with the Boltzmann factor and so on. So, my idea was always that uh, he, he, the parameter T has, uh, does have a physical meaning, so I completely agree with you. Okay, and, uh, in fact, uh, uh, the problem is, th is this, whether you, one believes that the changing T is connected with the multi bath system, or uh, I had always the idea that it was uh, always to the same temperature and you changed only the parameters of the system. So uh, I, I can give you the formula I, I have to recover that uh, the change in T was uh, uh, thermodynamic transfer. Trans Formation, you could talk about temperature and so on. So my error, so to speak, is a different interpretation. That uh, I believe that it is always at the same temperature, and you change the parameters of the system. But so yes, but uh, so it, it would be very interesting to see the connection. Yes, I think that it would come back to the same at the end of the day. But uh, uh, because uh, in any case, for those of again for experts. This term won't surprise you because you know how to write, we know how to write dynamic things in such a way that they resemble static things. And so this is the Q minus Q zero that you wrote. So clearly it is this term. And clearly uh, you can convince yourself that this is a flux of, of energy. So uh, I think that it will, but, but all, we, are, we are thinking about it. I mean, but I think it's very, very suggestive. Okay, seems to be no further questions. So let's thank Jorge one more time.